Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of Chewing the Brew. Today, I'll be drinking my first beer from Double Mountain, Double Mountain, in Hood River, uh, Oregon. It's another one of the small breweries that I visited several weeks ago when I was visiting Hood River. Um, this was a recommendation from my brother Ryan, who's been on the, the these videos a couple times. He said they were very interesting and he could make sense of them or something like that. Like the, the, the beers weren't simple, but they were accessible to him. Okay, cool. Um, so I got several. They seem to also like ferment brewing. Double Mountain seems to specialize in uh, wild fermented beers. And so there's a couple Saisons and a couple Belgian Sours from them that I'll be trying over the next few weeks. Um, it's also super local. They have a, a very, a very uh, popular uh, brew pub bar uh, attached to the brewery that was quite full the Saturday evening when we stopped through just before heading out of town to head back up north. Um, but this is their IRA, the India Red Ale. So that means uh, there's, there's an India Pale Ale, which means it uses pale malts. And there's an India Red Ale, which means it uses red malts. Same type of grain, generally speaking. I mean, grain bills vary, but the, the same types of grain you expect to find in an IPA, except roasted darker. So these are going to be crystal malts, maybe some brown malts, etc. Just darker roasting levels. So like with the um, uh, Rubens Meta Modern, or with, um, oh, what are some of the other red... IPAs I've had recently. I can't remember. I've had several of them. I've enjoyed nearly all of well, I've enjoyed all of them. <laughs> the stronger malt, roastier malt character balancing nicely with the hops usually means good things for me. So first time brewery for me, Double Mountain, and uh, an Irish Red Ale, which is a style I like. So here's hoping. Um, first off, actually, before I pour this, a uh, quick note on glassware. Why do I drink from these little tasting glasses? Uh, yeah, I mean, to be honest, this beer is probably going to end up in this glass when I drink it. But when I'm trying to get a better sense or more concentrated set of the the smells from a beer and the flavors from a beer, because mo a lot of tasting is smelling, the more, you know, closed mouth of this... Um, tasting goblet is going to be far more effective for that um, which is why I use these. I picked this up at uh, Goodwill for I don't know 75 cents I think it was and it's got a local uh, three magnets brewing from Olympia here so it's one of the local it's a local breweries tasting goblet. It's quite nice cheap don't don't buy glasses new is what I've learned <clears throat> Excuse me. Go to go to Goodwill. Get yourself some glasses. Um, you know, enjoy it in the glasses you have. You don't have to go get new glasses. But for my case, my use case in particular, for being able to pick out smells and such, my nose isn't great. I'm an amateur at this. Um, but having a good glass stacks the deck a little bit in my favor. Anyways, let's pour this and see what it's all about. Okay, a little bit ahead, not a huge amount. Um, it's filtered. Oh, even from here I'm getting the, the roasty notes. It's amber, it is not red. It's uh, maybe almost copper colored. It's a very pretty color. Um, the head is creamy. It's rocky, so there's a good combination of bubble sizes in it. Uh, and it has dissipated relatively quickly so I'm sure we can bring it back to life here. But even from here, I'm smelling the really fresh, roasty malt flavors, which is really, <laughs> that lets me expect things good, good things. Hmm. Caramels. More toasty bread than, um, than, um, 
coffee. Well, I mean, it's not dark enough. I wouldn't be expecting coffee anyways. It smells pretty fresh. It has a, a bottling date on it that says something 10-22. So I'm guessing there's a print error because I can't tell what the first character is. It could be a 1, but I don't think so. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's not a 5. It might be a 4, but I don't know. So it was on the 10th day of the 2020 of the year 2022 of whatever month. <laughs> but it smells fresh, so there's that. Hmm, there's some funkiness in there. Maybe some coffee-like flavors. Yeah, caramels, toast. Um, it smells pretty good. It smells interesting. There's a, I think there's a hop smell to it as well. Not a, not like a citrus, not like a, a hazy IPA. More of a West Coast IPA hop smell. Well, let's see how it tastes. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Emphasis on the roasty. Definite emphasis on the roast. The 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 malt is very very present here, and very nice. The hops are definitely there. It's it's malt and hops. There's nothing else going on here. Um, I mean, there's a lot in there, but it's a West Coast, heavily hopped IPA, and uh, paired with a very nice roasty amber, amber ale or red ale. Uh, that's that's quite tasty. Um, it is 65 IBU, so that that bitterness is expected in this level of IPA. Rather than getting toast. There's maybe a touch of caramel, um, and if it's if it's toast, it's like burnt toast, like um, like you burned the toast really bad and you scraped off the black parts because you're cheap and or poor or you're my grandfather <laughs> and you grew up in the Great Depression and you're eating that anyways because it's still good food. You might not even have scraped off the black parts. Um, <laughs> um, uh, Grandpa Franklin. <laughs> a lot of good memories with him. Um, so yeah, like a, a burnt, it's, it's toast to the side of burntness. I would guess that is probably at least partially due to the bitterness of the hops, not just the roast level of the malt. It shows how closely paired the two are though, that it, you can't really differentiate, or it's difficult to differentiate the the malt character from the hop from the hop character because they're they're both right there working very nicely together in in sync. There's a sweetness, kind of a, a pleasing sweetness that that uh, carries around it. Um, not quite honey. It's more of a, a sugar, like a, a, a simple syrup kind of sweetness. Um, and it's just kind of playing around the edges. Hmm. It's pretty good. I like that. Um, being as Double Mountain is for a piece for me, I've never seen their beers locally here. Much like ferment, they're they're too small. They're you know y'all and Hood River are lucky to have them, and uh, based on the based on the crowd there, you know it. <laughs> so good for you. Um, I'm not sure I would uh, get this. You know, I'm not sure I'd go looking for this personally. Uh, it's it's a bit too much of the kind of the hard IPA for me, but 
the the roasty malts do appeal to me quite a lot in this. I will not not enjoy drinking the rest of this bottle, that's for sure. It's going to be a tasty, enjoyable beer to drink down. Um, the yeah, so so from the from the nose, you're getting uh, you know the, that toasty uh, caramel and and um, really nice roasty malt flavor. In the taste, you're getting you're tasting the malts. They're simple malts, but they're there. They're not offensive. They're, there's no offensive or off flavors. It's a very tasty. Uh, I think my brother described it properly. It was a uh, kind of a. It was. It's clear. It's clear what's going on in this beer. It's. Uh, it's. Nothing weird or wacky, off the off the hinge or something. It's strong flavors, but still simple flavors working well together, and producing a definitely pleasant, enjoyable glass of red IPA. India red. Sorry, red IPA. India red ale a, a a heavily hopped red or amber ale and good stuff i like it don't mind it at all and so this has been double mountains ira india red ale and i will catch y'all on the flip side